Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Quark Express. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to look at how to turn any PDF document into a Quark Express 2016 or 2017 template. Now, uh, a number of people have contacted me to say they're moving across uh, to Quark from another package, but their previous package uh, came with lots of templates or they could find lots on the web. Quark does not ship with templates, but it doesn't need to because every PDF document you already have, every PDF document you can legitimately download from the web can be the basis of a template using Quark Express's unique convert to native objects feature. Well, uh, let's go to the screen. Now, I've, I've created a magazine here, uh, which is just eight pages. It's just an example. Uh, some magazines I was looking at when I was trying all this out were 131 pages, but this one's just gonna to show us the way. And if you look, there's a couple of things here. So the first one is, this is a, a cropped version. Um, uh, clearly, this is not gonna be the right page size or anything like that. Uh, what are we gonna do about this? Uh, because uh, if we import it like this, uh, we'll have some problems. Well, easily solved in Quark Express. Let's go there and let's have a, uh, a new document. Um, okay, I've got a, a plain A4 document here, uh, just regular A4 page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a page uh, box and Command E or Control E on a PC. And I'm going to import the first page. Now, if you're working with a 131 page magazine, you do not want to import 131 pages. It will take forever to get anywhere. So you want to select some pages. So even though I could use PDF Importer Pro XT, we looked at a few weeks ago, or I could use Image Grid, which is built in, I'm actually going to do each one individually. But important now, it defaults to banding box to use media box, but I want to use trim box. I want to use the actual trimmed version, not uh, the one with all the crop marks on it. Uh, so open, and it imports like that. Now, I now, before I want to do anything else, want to know the exact size of my page. So let's command, uh, so a control click or right click on a PC for the uh, contextual menu, I'm gonna scale fit box to picture. Uh, and that should now tell me uh, what my page size is gonna be. And it's 205 by 270. So let's go back up here, uh, control click or right click, uh, layout properties, and I'm gonna copy that in. So from uh, down here to up here, so uh, 205 to 270. I'm gonna leave those margins, they're relevant for now. Uh, and uh, what I should now have uh, is, let's again, just resize. Uh, so I think I had adaptive scaling turned on there. So I'm just gonna resize that back in, uh, fit box to picture again. And that now properly fills my page and lines up as you can see perfectly. So uh, I've got my, my page correct size. What's gonna happen next? Well, uh, we are gonna import all eight pages here, but it would take a little bit of time and it's a bit tedious. So here's one uh, I've done earlier. So I've imported all of these and I've converted to nat native objects. Let me just go back to that one we were looking at a moment ago. Uh, click on here, right click on a PC or control click on a Mac for the contextual menu, convert to native objects. Uh, I don't want link raster images on unless it's my copyright and it's my image. In fact, in this case it is, it doesn't matter. Okay, and it then gives me my conversion. Let's go to the one we prepared. You can see it's done that. And I've got my list of steps here. So one, get that page size. Two, calculate the margin. So let's see what we've got here. Um, now, I'm gonna make a little box here uh, of the size of the margin. Let's zoom right in. So I wanna know what this is. And usually there's gonna be some kind of a unit in the way the margins are constructed. So this is 8.475 wide. Let's just make that square. 8.475. Um, okay, let's come back down again. I'm gonna give that a color to make it slightly easier to work with, make that magenta. And now come over here and whoa, we'll see that the inside margin is uh, double that. So again, uh, that's giving us a unit. And what in fact we'll find with this, and I've already put them in, is that the margins come out to be at uh, the top 
are one and a half times that unit, the outside one times and the inside two times and the bottom three times. So you calculate that and you, you go to uh, a master page in page master guides and grid. And I've already put them in. Uh, 12.712, 25.425, 16.95, 18.8.475. 8 now you might say, well, those are silly units. Why have I used that? Doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously the designer of the magazine you're working for, from uh, had a particular plan. If you just want to replicate, go with this for now. Now the next thing I want to do, come back to my list, is set the grid. Uh, so uh, I, I want to find out what is the, the underlying structure of this page. So let's go through and let's see what is the narrowest thing. Now obviously this was Latin text, so my, my autocorrect XT is identifying everything as an error. Uh, don't be bothered by that. Well, my narrowest thing I'm seeing on this page is this little box here. Um, and uh, come down, this one as well, this one. Um, what else we find over here? So my guess is going to be that that is probably the underlying unit of the grid. Well, let's take that and um, let's move it across. Uh, and again, and again, and again. That's five times. Uh, it's not going to get six times in there. So let's just now align or space those out. So I'm going to space align uh, and I'm going to uh, space them. Okay. And let's now have a look at what the gap is between those. So again, uh, sorry for the confusion here, uh, but I want a box which will tell me uh, in my measurements down here, that that's a, a five millimeter gap. And that has now given me, I think, my knowledge of the grid. So let's delete those, we don't really want them. Uh, what I've got is uh, across the margins, five columns with a five millimeter gap. Now I don't actually need to know how wide the column is because if I now go to my master page, I'm going to go to uh, guides, which is over here. And in this little menu down here, which people often don't notice, you've got create grid or create rows and columns. Now you might think grid is the answer. Actually it's rows and columns I want. And uh, I've got five at five millimeters uh, and I'm going to make the boundaries, the margins, um, uh, not the gutters. Now, in fact, uh, in this particular case, it's working to the old margins of the page. So I want to go back uh, and just uh, recreate the document with the correct uh, page margins in there. But I, I, I would create the grid in that way uh, and uh, then work to that. Now, of course, you don't have to. You can simply uh, delete all this text and, uh, and then use these boxes because uh, it comes through as group text. But in most cases, you want to understand the grid rather than just populating it with your own text. Okay, what are we going to do next? The next thing to do is to figure out, figure out the, uh, or actually create the master pages. So what have we got here? Okay, we've got a, a, a page footer here, um, which undo that, uh, ungroup that. So I've got this graphic bar here and I've got this footer here. Let's go back to that master page and I'm just going to use paste in place. So it's not regular paste, but in edit, paste in place. And now we'll see this coming across. Um, almost certainly, I'm going to want to use a content variable uh, for this rather than uh, just putting the numbers in. So uh, let's change the page number for now. So I'm going to do Command-3 or Control-3 puts a page number in. You can also insert that from Insert Character Special. Um, sorry, no, it's, it's Insert uh, Content Variable uh, Page Number will be in there somewhere, uh, current page number. But actually, Command-3 or Control-3 uh, does it for you. Uh, and just expand that a little bit. Uh, and we'll make that uh, right just to find. Uh, and we'll open this out a little bit more. And if we now go back into uh, the document, we'll see that, yeah, that's pretty much uh, what it was. So we're gonna delete the ones that are on the page already uh, and just work with our now automatic uh, 
page numbering, which uh, will, of course, work for the template itself. Deleted the wrong thing there. Oh, I didn't ungroup that. Okay. So oh, we can go through it and do all that. Okay, what's the next step? Um, next thing is to figure out the typography and create the style sheet. So let's have a look at what we've got. Well, here we've got uh, some start of our first paragraph text. So let's just, well, first we're gonna go and make normal. So um, I think this is my normal text. It looks like it's been used quite a lot. So here, I'm just going to, uh, okay, um, that's later regular. 10 point, uh, and I'm going to update normal, that's it, to match that. Uh, and again, I'm going to update normal to match that. And if I now click on here, you'll see that uh, later regular has come in. So Quark Express always begins with Helvetica 12 point, kind of neutral, a bit over large, but I've now used update uh, and I've made my normal uh, the right font. Now, uh, what about this font? Uh, let's call this uh, call out, because that's what it is. Uh, let's call this one caption, because that's what that is. Uh, let's call this one uh, title one. Let's call this one uh, paragraph one, or first paragraph, whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's call this one title two alternate. Uh, we'll call this one display text. And uh, if you look at all of these, what's actually it's doing is it is copying across all the settings from uh, those things. And then uh, we could call this one uh, title zero uh, for double page thread. When you're doing a magazine, always consider the spreads as one unit. You want one main graphic idea on the page, not 10 graphic ideas, and, and see the page as one thing. The basic rule for magazines is that the fewer the columns, the more important the article. So if you have, uh, for example, two narrow columns here, which really are very narrow, those are for just for perhaps the names of the editors or some new snippet. Your, your main articles are gonna be in wide columns. And this kind of editorial piece, which I, I deleted here, uh, put the place all the text back in, which is one column. That's the most important thing. That's the most prestige. The more cluttered the page, the less significance you give it. And again, giving this, this big picture here uh, really helps us out. So we've now got some style sheets. So what else is on my list? Um, so, oops, uh, I changed normal, so uh, of course. Uh, okay, so figure out the typography and create the style sheets, that's great. Find the ornaments. Now in this particular document, I hadn't actually created any ornaments at all uh, because it was just an example, but in most magazines will have distinctive ornaments that they use, and you, you could go and find those. What I have got uh, is drop capitals. Now, on import, Quark Express can't really tell its drop cap. So if I wanted to combine uh, those two boxes, I could use um, contextual menu uh, and then, I better, better select both of them, uh, and then merge text boxes. Uh, but I don't really need to do that. All I need to do is turn on uh, drop caps uh, in this particular thing uh, and match it up. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens if we did that. But that will be a little bit of work. So back to the top, what else have I got to do? Uh, okay, deal with the bleed. So this is quite important. Go back to my master page and I'll see that on the bottom, I've got this, uh, this nice band, which gives the document a bit of distinctiveness, but there's no bleed attached. So that's right, because I didn't want to import all the crop marks, but I do want to bring this across now. Again, if you're worried about bleed, I would go to Guides, Create Bleed and Safety Guides. And I would just put in my uh, nine points, if that's what I'm using, uh, or three millimeters, I can type any unit I want. And that's gonna give me my uh, safety or bleed for the crop marks. And you can see those uh, coming in uh, over here in red and in green to tell me what's going on. 
So uh, I'm now going to uh, bleed that out uh, on both sides and I'm safe. And if I want to do uh, anything else in the rest of the document, I can now uh, work to those guides. Obviously this picture has been imported and, and so will not uh, fill those guides. Uh, if I have the copyright of this picture, if it's my picture, I can get the original picture. Uh, but in fact, the next thing to do, and the final thing, is to delete copyright content. This is absolutely essential. If you've borrowed a layout from somebody else, if you found something you like, and I've often uh, in the past worked by uh, starting with a magazine that I like and then basing on there. When I was doing uh, teenage uh, uh, campaigns, I used to go into a news agent and buy several teenage magazines and then base our layouts on that. Nobody, no matter even if you're 21, should imagine they still understand teenagers unless you actually are one. So, um, but when you're working with, with something like that, uh, it's essential to go through and get rid of the copyright text. So the best way to do this is to go to usage and uh, go uh, to pictures and just then to work through all those pictures uh, and one by one show uh, and go through uh, and, and then just delete them as they, as they go. Well, that is pretty much it. Uh, you might say this was entirely obvious and, and I, I think for some people it is totally obvious that's what you do. For other people you might find that useful. Uh, what I want to say is that this convert to native objects feature is so powerful in Quark Express. Not just because you want to use uh, the boxes themselves but because you can then use them for the measurements and to discover that grid you're going to work to. Uh, I would say that for uh, a magazine of 10 unique pages, you're going to be spending about an hour to get that template together. Uh, if you were working uh, from scratch, you might be spending several days to get to the same point. Of course, the aim of this is not to plagiarize other people's work. Use it then as a basis for creating your own uh, unique designs. Though, of course, if you've got PDFs on your hard drive from previous work you've done using another, another software package, then you can go straight in, bring in all the content, and of course those images and those ornaments are already yours. Uh, you have no problem with it. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Martin Turner, author of Desktop Publishing with Quark Express 2017. Hope to see you next time. In the meantime, happy quarking. Yeah.